Okay, so we've been looking at the I Am's of John's Gospel. We've been looking at who genuine Jesus is. And the reason we've been doing that is that we are convinced that there are lots of people out there who are rejecting Jesus on the basis of the fake one they've seen. That's been the rationale behind our series for the last, what, seven weeks or so? Something like that in any event. We've been looking at the I Am's of John's Gospel, looking at genuine Jesus. And in the last of those, in those intimate hours with his disciples as he's preparing for his imminent betrayal, departure, death and resurrection, as we look at this whole thing about him being the vine, and us, the branches, in the last of those I am's then, Jesus reminds them of the nature and the importance of genuine discipleship of the genuine Jesus. Okay? So up until now we've been looking at the genuine Jesus, because a lot of people see a fake Jesus represented, and reject, because it's not, it's not great. But also you'll find a lot of people look at fake discipleship, and they say, as, as my then sadly unbelieving mother once said to me, if that's your Christianity, right, you can keep it as it were. Now, most of us, you can't change your view, and thank the Lord for that. But do you see the point? Not only a fake Jesus, but fake discipleship leads to mass rejection of Christ and the faith. It's not a fake Jesus simply that results in people rejecting genuine Jesus. It's fake following that results in people wanting to have nothing to do with following genuine Jesus too. So what's the essence of Christian discipleship? That's a good question. I can hand out some sheets of paper. Here we go. What is the essence of Christian discipleship? That would be very revealing. I'm not brave enough to do that. Is it chapel going? Because, you know, the conviction right here, you'll find the very, very strong conviction amongst people that genuine discipleship to Jesus is chapel going. And you can see how many people have rejected genuine Jesus because of that. Is it religious initiation? You know, I've been confirmed. I've been baptised. I was christened as a baby. Is it maintaining a strict and particular ethical code? Is it strongly arguing for the ethical Christianization of secular society? You see, that, that, those are a bunch of the perceptions that people have. Of what discipleship amounts to. And that's not right, is it? What is required of us if we are to be resilient, faithful, God-honouring, God-pleasing followers, disciples of Christ in a secular society which is sold out in hostility to Jesus? What is genuine discipleship? Now, discipleship, the clues in the name. Discipleship rests on disciplines. Disciplines. You know what disciplines are? Disciplines are patterns of training. Disciplines are things that we... Oh, the ways that we train. You know, you do ballet, you know about discipline. Okay? Fair enough? You do uh, trampolining, isn't it? You do trampolining, you know about disciplines. There are disciplines that you undertake in order to train in a particular thing. Well, look, discipleship, do you, do you imagine it's going to be anything else? It's going to be about disciplines. And, and what looks like discipleship actually rests on certain spiritual disciplines that constitute the essential activities involved in following Christ. What are they? What do they look like? What are you getting into if you're considering becoming and being a follower of genuine Jesus? The Lord sums it up here. Remain in me and I will remain in you. There you go. What's the rationale for that? No branch can bear fruit by itself. It's got to remain in the vine. You've got to preserve the graft onto the rootstock. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. We need to practice that discipline of remaining. Christ. Otherwise, your branches, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, he can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, it's like a branch that's thrown away and withers, such branches are picked up, thrown before and burned. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. What we're looking at here then is the disciplines of remaining in Christ. Now, just before we go anywhere with that, please notice at the outset and remind yourself frequently as I drone on, right, that we're talking about a life that is by grace and not by works. The commandment here is not to an individual Christian, go and bear fruit. The commandment to the individual is what? The commandment to the individual is remain in the vine. Because as long as you preserve that graft and that graft is working, you know about grafting things into trees, don't you? 
They draw the sap out of the rootstock and those branches grow. And if it's a fruit tree that's been grafted in, it draws its sap, it draws its sustenance, it draws everything it needs from the rootstock to be able to bear fruit over there on its own branch. Have you got that picture? I'm nervous about this. Because <laughs> I'm going to go and say, go to this, go to this, go to this. But, boy, this is the foundation of it. We are not commanded to go and bear fruit on our own. We're commanded to stay in the vine. Stay grafted in. And then the sap flows and the juice comes up from, you know, below. And we bear fruit. What we need to do is look after the graft. You're not required to come up with the fruit by yourself. You're required to derive all that is necessary to bear that fruit from the rootstock, from Christ. Because it's by means of your relationship to the rootstock that you bear fruit for God. This is not like so many sermons, a demand for bricks without straw. Does that make sense? All that follows then describes how you strengthen and maintain the graft. The graft to the one who supplies what you need, supplies the fruit which is going to hang on you. Now let me show you that from Romans 1, because I, I, I don't care if I run out of time, I've just got to establish this before we go anywhere. Paul, servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. Right? Fine. The gospel, I've been talking about the gospel now, okay, which gospel? The gospel he, that is God, promised beforehand to his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, <coughs> whereas his human nature was a descendant of David, and who the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, we know which Jesus, we know which gospel, we know which Jesus is at the heart of it, and here's how it works. Through him and for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to obedience. That would have been a really good Jewish message. But this is a Christian message. He's saying to the obedience that comes from faith. What we require to do is show that faith that joins us to Christ and the obedience flows out of that like the fruit grows on the end of the branch from the rootstocks supply. Is that making sense? So be happy. Don't be, don't be shouting abuse yet, so that's good, isn't it? So there's, there's the picture, okay? And you also are amongst those who are called to belong. Now he goes a little bit further through that passage, and he spells out people and places and stuff like that. And then he talks about being you to preach the gospel also to those who are at Rome, the center of the known world. I'm not ashamed, verse 16 of Romans 1, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. How, how do you work that out? For, because of it, okay? Because in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. Stay in the rootstock, rootstock supplies all you need. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. How do you become a Christian? How do you become a Christian, Caleb? What do you tell your mates? When your mate says, I think I'm turning into a Christian. What do you make sure of? That he is... Not lying. Not lying, that's a good one, yeah. Not winding you up. That is a very good one, actually. Yeah, well done. Excellent. You make sure he, he knows that what he needs to do to become a Christian is just to trust Jesus, isn't it? Just, just, just got to trust him. That's how you become a Christian. Are you convinced that that's how you go on being a Christian? Because there's this really pernicious and really pervasive idea out there. Is you become a Christian by grace through faith alone, but then you live as a Christian by works and self-righteousness alone. Paul is saying it's by faith from first to last. What we are to do is to stay in the vine. And then in, in, in communion with that vine, in working with him, in going along with him, in living in fellowship with him, these other things are going to flow from that. Not that we don't have to work and try and, and resist temptation and so on, but all that's doing is preserving our link to the vine, our graft into that vine. Is that, is that okay? Have you got that? It's not making sense. If not, you know, cup of tea and a biscuit afterwards. But that is so, so important in terms of the message of Scripture.